Hello everyone, I thought I would take some time and explain my where is Jeff trip and what I was doing out there. I, I made a stop zero, you know, and, and this was just O'Hare Airport, which is, you know, pretty easy to figure out since I live in Chicago. In fact, if you look at the train here, the train actually says O'Hare on it, and only a couple of people picked up on that. And then I, I show the train going underground because that's the blue line going to O'Hare, that's what it does. And then you get off the train here and there's some pretty recognizable lights. And the terminals, uh, there is no terminal for at O'Hare, so that was a clue too. And some folks looked up the restaurant there and realized it was an O'Hare, but yeah, this one was fairly easy. If you look way in the distance here, you can actually see the dinosaur. That is probably the most recognizable thing at O'Hare. So <laughs> there you go. And then I flew to Dulles, <laughs> Dulles International Airport. In fact, the first shot there is all you need. Dulles has those mobile lounges that take you to the airplane and they were visible in the first shot. But I really liked how some people figured out this was Dulles. Uh, some folks looked at the restaurants, some folks saw that tower there and said, oh, well that's Dulles Tower. They actually recognized it. Other people looked at the schedule board and looked up the flights and realized that all those flight numbers right here were leaving from Dallas. Uh, I'm sorry, Dulles, and <laughs> I thought that was super creative. Somebody figured it out just from this, is that there were Air Force One toys in the store, so that kind of narrows it down to two airports. Anyway, I, I was very impressed you guys figured that out that quickly. But it was interesting, right, because I flew from Chicago to to Dulles, uh, Washington, D.C., so was my trip going to happen in Washington, D.C.? Well, as it turns out, no. I was on a cruise that left from Barcelona, Spain, and I landed in Barcelona, spent the night in a hotel, and I didn't have any transportation, and I only had a little bit of time, so I decided to just walk around until I found something interesting. It was next to this river, posted a picture of the name of the river, a lot of people figured it out from that, but there wasn't anything <laughs> terribly interesting near me. Posted a couple of red herrings like the Anne Frank sign and that zoo sign that ended with a French domain. But then there's lots of clues here, like there's snow, except it's not snow, it's actually ice from the fish markets. And these signs are not in Spanish, they're in Catalan, which is a slight difference, but uh, had some problems translating, that is for very sure. Oranges and stuff. Anyway, this was clearly Mercabana, which is this large district of food distribution places that feed a huge portion of Europe. So. I got on the ship and sailed for a few days and then finally arrived here in Lanzarote, one of the Canary Islands. And there was a lot to see on Lanzarote. It's probably my favorite of the Canary Islands. And the first thing I saw was this fort and the entire waterfront is kind of dominated by this fort. When it was built, you could only get there at low tide. And then in recent years, they've built, well, recent in the last couple hundred years, they built this walkway out there that's made out of lava rock. So that was actually a little hint too, that this was a volcanic island. Uh, some strange stories in here. I, I didn't feel entirely welcome. It felt like the guide who let me in didn't want me here. I, it was the end of the day. Maybe he wanted to go home. I don't know. But people figured this out very, very quickly just from the pictures of the fort. And there's so many of these old forts in the Canary Island and in Spain and in that entire region that I'm super impressed you guys figured it out as quickly as you did. And so this is still in Lanzarote and in the capital Arrecife, and it's just images of some of the statues in the shopping area there. People generally seem to figure this out with Google Lens where they found some famous buildings and such, and uh, this was a really interesting place to visit. I was super excited to find popcorn. I'm shaking with excitement out of buying the popcorn. These cows actually popped up all over this trip, and, uh, and I love seeing the signs. <laughs> Um, just trying to figure out what was going on with the local politics was interesting. But it was a, it's kind of a, a, a cute little shopping district. Uh, the pharmacy signs all over that part are like that. I, little graffiti that doesn't help you figure out where it is, but the Super Dino does. That's the, the chain of supermarkets that's in the Canary Islands. I'm going to pause on that. They were called Bucheros, and they are playing a game where they try to tag people with a fish bladder that's inflated. That's, that's a whole story, but uh, 
people figured out where I was from that, but didn't really understand the context. <laughs> so we're still on Lanzarote here. In fact, I did this before I filmed the other stuff, not that it matters. I took a tour up to a famous national park that uh, I'll show you here in a second. These houses here are called the Smurf Houses, and some people figured out where I was from that. But if you look here, what you're looking at is actually vineyards and other places. Uh, someone figured out from the camels, which I thought was pretty good. It's a very windy place, so any crops they plant have to be surrounded by these walls. But it doesn't take long until you get into a landscape like this. Oh, those are camels in the foreground, by the way. You can have camel rides there. This is a very volcanic island, very recent eruptions, and you get to drive through this moonscape. And in the center of it is this place, which is a restaurant where they do these demonstrations, such as showing how hot the ground is just by putting some vegetation on it, or geysers, they just dump water in a hole, but you've got that really quick. They actually cook on the volcano. So that's an amazing restaurant there. Now this is a day later, this is Fuerteventura, which was actually my least favorite stop of the entire trip. This place is kind of like, I thought I'd get flagged for that, but I didn't. This is kind of like a tourist destination for like British bros. It's all bars and casinos and hotels and just not my scene. So I tried to figure out what could I make a video of here, and I decided that I would just take pictures of all the different restaurants that were here, none of which have anything to do with the Canary Islands. They're all from all over the place. And then at the end, as a bit of a joke, I would show you where I actually ate. And it was only partially a joke, because on all these trips I do, I always try to stop at a McDonald's just to contrast McDonald's all around the world. And there's a lot of contrast. They're all very different. But here, all they had was a Burger King. And I actually had this thing, the Brutal Bacon. It was the worst Burger King experience of my life. <laughs> but then the next day, we went to Gran Canaria, one of the larger, more settled islands. And there's a museum of Gran Canaria, which is near this plaza here. And Canary Islands are named after dogs, right? So I had to show the dogs. But this museum used to be the house of a Dr. Chill, and he did a lot of stuff with skulls. In fact, if you ever read The Bell Curve, he was one of those people trying to suggest that different races had different skulls and different cranial capacities, and, you know, it's kind of eugenic-y and all, not all that great. But it was an interesting place to visit, and he did donate all of his stuff to this museum as he died, and I was able to see it. And he basically raided all the graves on the island and put them in his museum, <laughs> which is a little problematic, but they're all in here now, and you get to look at them, and there they are, laid out in this fake cave that was a recreation, and it was a really interesting place to visit, and a lot easier to get to than the actual caves. And from here, it was off to Morocco, and the first stop for me was Rabat. We actually docked in Casablanca, but I took a tour to Rabat, which is the capital. Saw a bunch of capital-y things I didn't really care too much about, but then we went to this Casbah, which is just a word for fort. You can see the French cannons there, big French influence in this area. And inside this particular Casbah is the Andalusian Garden, which was this beautiful garden. Oh yeah, I gotta have a cat. <laughs> And I wandered around here for a while, it was absolutely gorgeous, loved it, and almost died here. I put my foot into this kind of water trough and almost snapped my ankle, and I rolled down the sidewalk, and people with me were on the same cruise I was on, so for the rest of the cruise, they were always like, hey, you're the guy who killed himself in, in Rabat, and yeah, so I had a little reputation going, <laughs> but it was okay. It was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed this nice, peaceful spot in the middle of this busy city. And a lot of people figured this out, and uh, good on you for that. From there, we actually went back to Casablanca, where the ship was docked. And there's lots to see in Casablanca, but I decided to do something a little bit different. We were dropped off for an hour to go shopping in this one square, and I thought, let's just have a little piece of all of Casablanca. You know, like, what's a, what's a day like in Casablanca? So I just spun the camera around and filmed this square, and... A lot of people figured this out because they had been there. Apparently this is where all the tourists get dropped off, and some people figured it out from that weird red sculpture in the middle, and other people figured it out by the stores. They googled the stores and did a cross-reference, and you know. But for me, it was just a nice, joyous little moment of a, a slice of life from Casablanca. Kids playing, people shopping, and the coffee shops here are really interesting because the seats are set up like stadiums where you sit in the seat and then you look out and watch people go by. <laughs> I thought that was very interesting and it's exactly what I would want to be doing if I were at one of those coffee shops. 
From there, it was off to Tangier. I actually filmed this part on the boat because I forgot to film an intro. That's a sculpture that was on the boat. And look, more cats. You know, you can't go wrong with cats. It's hilarious walking around in these streets that people won't take any pictures. And oh, there's a cat, and they take pictures of the cats. We had a snack at this place, and it really struck me as a beautiful spot. Everything's covered with mosaics, and it's actually a hotel. It's the Hotel Continental which overlooks the port of Tangier. You can see it from the ship, and you can see the ship from it. I had to be careful in where I pointed. So I really hope to take Jen, my wife, here sometime, because I think she would absolutely love it. Commanding views of the bay, as you can see as I go out here. Just a beautiful spot. The hotel's like 100, 150 years old, and really just kind of a nice, authentic piece of Moroccan architecture with mint tea, which was really good. <laughs> from there, we actually... We went away from Gibraltar and headed up the west coast of Spain to Cadiz, an ancient city. Cadiz is one of the oldest settlements in Europe. And because of that, when they do work on buildings, they find old stuff. And I was just wandering around and went to a famous tower. There's all kinds of famous stuff there, but I was trying to avoid that. I wanted something a little challenging. And I found this little tiny museum in the basement of a building. And this is some of the stuff they found when they were working on the building. But what this place was, was a fish sauce factory. So the Romans loved fish sauce. And they had this recipe where they would put certain parts of the fish in these vats, always including the intestines, because that somehow was what made the fermentation work. They let it stay there for months and then bottle it in those vases that we saw at the beginning here and then sell it all over and put it on all kinds of foods. The Romans were apparently crazy about fish sauce, and that was the factory where some of it was made. From there, it was back past Gibraltar and up the east coast to Valencia. And Valencia, this is the city of arts and sciences, a very famous place in Valencia. Lots of movies made here. If you ever saw the movie Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland is this place. It looks like that. It's amazing. The architecture actually kind of overshadows the museums and aquarium they have there. But I went to the Science Museum and took little snippets of the Science Museum just so people could kind of try to figure it out. And of course, the real clincher here were, no, <laughs> not the robot waiter, which those things are kind of useless, actually. It was this sculpture of DNA, which is pretty well known in the area. And then the real clincher is they had a massive exhibit on Pixar and people were able to search, you know, Pixar exhibit and figure out exactly where it was because this is a touring exhibit that just happens to be there at this time of year. So a great stop. But then plans did not go as I had planned. <laughs> I was supposed to fly home and then my plane got delayed and I ended up having to spend a night in Munich. And Munich airport is a lot different than airports in the US. It's in a community and there's a supermarket in the airport. And this is a massive airport. This isn't some little thing. And where the airport is, there are office buildings and condos. And then outside, right outside the doors, was this winter market that they had set up where they had this weird curling game and they had a toboggan and ice skating and shows. And there was actually a guy from Texas on the stage playing country music. I went up and talked to him for a little bit and he said he'd moved to Munich a few years ago and he has no plans to ever move back to the US. And this funky airstream that looks like an airplane that was a food truck. I mean, really interesting place to just suddenly find. <laughs> right at the airport. Uh, I ended up staying at the hotel at the airport and then flying out the next day. So, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along with my trip and uh, go out there and see stuff. There's a lot to see and it doesn't always have to be big stuff. Some of the small stuff is much, much more interesting.